Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this dramatic stormy sky with storm clouds blowing across over the South Downs. Um, this is part of a much longer, more in-depth tutorial on Patreon um, with several more demos included in the tutorial and teaching content suitable for beginners, intermediates and more advanced um, painters looking at how we can create a painting that focuses particularly on the sky as dominant or on the landscape as dominant. So if you're interested in that, please follow the link below. And I'm using this photograph of the South Downs near Cookmere Haven with this wonderful storm blowing in and just a little bit of um, foliage and trees across the top of the hill. I'm going to demonstrate how using proportion and then focusing on the sky um, can create a skyscape uh, where the sky is dominant. So I'm going to use Milford cold pressed watercolour paper. Um, it's taped to my board and my board is at an angle of about 45 degrees. Um, so gravity will help me paint as usual. And the first thing I'm going to do is just simply sketch in a really low horizon line. So my horizon line is about a fifth of my page. And those proportions of one fifth land, four fifths sky should help the sky to dominate. So use any wash brush to wet the paper, um, wetting it most, mostly all over, uh, leaving a few dry patches so I'll get a variety of soft and slightly harder edges, um, and then introducing a bit of um, quite weak yellow ochre. This is not gonna show very much in the sky, um, and introducing a little bit across the land for some of the glow of the sky into the land. Um, but this yellow ochre just takes away from the white of the paper in my paler areas. So they're not too white. They've still got that sort of storm cloud, um, sort of eerie uh, light and glow, hopefully. Now, what I'm focusing on here is not so much trying to paint the sky exactly. Um, I never try to do that. What I'm trying to do is to create a similar atmosphere to that in the photograph. Um, so I want the direction to be the same of the clouds. So that's why I'm painting in this kind of way that's bringing the clouds up over the hill uh, from lower left, lifting up towards the right. I'm introducing more of my paint here. Now this is Payne's Grey mixed with a bit of indigo. Um, and I'm working it in between and around my yellow ochre areas and my paler areas. You can see that um, the paint's running a bit here and there. Um, I'm fine with that because I want some soft glow and diffusions. If it runs too much, I can flatten my board. But I'm getting in some darker paint while I still can, while everything's wet, where the storm clouds are mostly intense and dark but also drying off my brush so it's just damp and softening back in places, lighting it up slightly uh, just where it meets the hill. With a dynamic sky like this, you could always lift with a tissue or a brush to create bolder, stronger clouds, but I often prefer not to. So I'm going to stop, look at it, and I'm looking at how wet the paint is in places, whether it's flowing a bit too much down the page, and it is, so I'm turning the board 90 degrees, and now that paint that was running down towards the hill is now running across the page. If you wanted your clouds to look like a rainstorm, then that's where you'd leave the board where it was, and the paint would run down and meet the top of the hill and create a beautiful effect of rain coming in. So I've just used the tips of my flat brush, clean and damp, just to soften through um, the clouds where they're palest and feather them a bit. And now I'm turning my board back round again, having a look at it, assessing it. I could tip and tilt it some more if I chose to, but I'm happy with this. So I'm now going to lay it flat so the washes won't move. They'll continue to soften and diffuse if I let it dry naturally, but I won't get any more of that sort of downward flow. 
it's really important at this stage as well not to touch it again. If you touch it again, you're in danger of overworking it. And because this is a skyscape where the sky is dominant, I want it to look free and fresh and underworked, if anything, rather than overworked. So I'm actually going to step away and go and have a cup of coffee so I'm not tempted to sort of tweak it and mess around with it anymore. And then I'll come back and finish it off when the painting's dry. So here it is. I put my board back up at 45 degrees. Um, it's nice and dry and I'm really pleased with the drama and the freshness of that sky. I think that's going to work as a skyscape, particularly because of the proportions. So now onto the land using my large flat wash brush, which is a Princeton Aqua Elite one and a half inch mottler. I've mixed up some yellow ochre and some raw umber and putting a little bit of sepia into it as well. Uh, but starting off with the lighter tones and gradually bringing in stronger and richer paint as I work across that small piece of hill. So just because it's a small area, I'm not going to neglect it. I'm going to try and make sure that there's um, a good amount of tone there. And I really like this earthy mix of yellow ochre and raw umber with a touch of sepia. I think it works really nicely. I can introduce slightly more tone and richer paint as I come down towards the foreground. And that just automatically gives me that little bit of a lighter glow on the top of the hill where it's catching the light from the sky above. It's just little things at the moment that I'm working on. Um, and now with a small synthetic round brush, size zero, um, it's a Da Vinci spin. Um, I'm putting in with Payne's Grey, a bit of indigo and a bit of sepia, um, these little hints of trees just sticking out in the distance above the hilltop, keeping it very, very simple. Um, and then once I've got the colour in, I can go in with a three quarter inch flat brush and just blend them in across the base, keeping it nice and flat so that I get that impression of looking up um, this sort of gentle hillside um, and being able to just see a little bit of these trees and bushes above the hill in the distance. So I'm just about done here. I'm going to just um, put another layer of this rich ochre, yellow ochre and raw umber colour across the bottom edge uh, just to really uh, deepen that tone to keep some nice variation on the land. And then I'm going to dip into a bit of my sort of um, indigo with a little bit of the other colours in it and using a fan brush, I'm going to just dance in the smallest amount of texture, which I can soften back with my finger if I need to, but just enough to add a little bit of something and nothing to the foreground. Maybe I can use a card just to pull out a few small little hints of grasses and things like that in the foreground, but I don't want anything much. All I'm trying to do is make the foreground interesting enough without making it over detailed. Um, the idea here is to show you that mostly it's the proportions here that allows us to have this dominant sky. Um, and also making sure that our sky is the focus by keeping the land fairly subdued and fairly simple, but still working to be able to link the two together and have this sort of gentle um, horizontal V shape or Z shape leading up bottom uh, right across the land, then up through the sky. So I'm going to leave it there. I could do more to it. I could put birds in the sky. That would add even more focus to the sky. But less is more. And my, um, my adage is to always step away from the painting before you think it's finished. Uh, because if you keep going at that point, you can often overdo it. I can decide whether I want to add birds later, once I've lived with this painting for a while. But at the moment, um, I'm very pleased with the way it's turned out. 
Um, and I'm hoping that you can see how dynamic this is to create this beautiful stormy sky over um, a very small amount of land so that the proportions here really help us to keep the sky dominant. So I hope that was helpful. Um, don't forget to follow the link and check out my Patreon if you're interested in more in-depth um, tutorials. Um, plus, it includes a look at this painting, um, which is exclusive to Patreon, where we paint um, a painting where the land is dominant rather than the sky. So thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.